Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to take a look at Tyson Williams and his debut performance as the starter with the Baltimore Ravens. And you're going to see here they're going to go off tackle right away. But the tackle, he gets pushed way into the backfield, which is going to be a recurring theme with the Baltimore Ravens offensive line is that they got pushed around and that these backs had to work around penetration a great deal in this game against the Las Vegas Raiders. And you can see right away his aiming points, you know, ruined because of this pushback. He's got to bend it around and then hurry up to get downhill. He reads the leverage correctly. You can see the outside defenders where their helmets are. They've got the outside contained, so he comes back to the inside. And then you're going to see him bend around. He does a good job of bending around, and he gets upfield quickly. But there's not much here because now he has to, you know, basically be prepared for 77, and he runs into 77 and pushes for what he can. The problem with this is that he doesn't really accelerate into contact. He's really just protecting the ball. Watch how he just covers up the ball with both hands, which is good, but you're going to see an overly cautious Tyson Williams in this first game. Because he doesn't want to lose the ball, he's afraid to lose an opportunity. So he's not finishing as hard. And when he drops his head, he's dropping his head and his eyes from contact. His back is flat and his head down. He's going to go down. I mean, the fact that he even gets a maybe a, a yard of push on this tells you a lot about that he has the strength to do more with contact balance. But he's being overly cautious, at least to begin the game. He doesn't want to fumble the ball. And he is inside, you know, they're inside their own five-yard line. So, he, you know, the directive here is get what you can, take care of the ball. Let's look at it from the opposite angle here, and you'll see what I mean when it comes to that. He's not really accelerating into contact to get that push. And this is what's different between um, what Williams did, last, you know, on Monday night and what you saw from Latavius Murray, who while Murray didn't gain as much as Tyson Williams, he had the confidence to accelerate through contact and could really get a push. But you can see the cautious the caution here. And you know, you appreciate that from a player who's essentially a rookie in terms of experience level on the field in the NFL. So he gets what he needs there. That's not bad. Now this is a gap play. You're gonna see this is an example of power. And power is when you're gonna have a runner, uh, pulling lineman working across to the outside. And everything you see with Williams is on point here. He follows that puller well, sets it up. There's no real cutback with gap play. So if you're looking at this backside crease, it looks like it's open. You have to remember that this defender is filling it unblocked. You rarely want to make a cutback in gap. You want to follow all the forces that are marshaled behind the puller here and the seals to the inside. So... Williams does a good job of following that outside man. And, you know, he wouldn't try and bounce this outside either because the defender with his with his pads really leaning towards that outside and this blocker coming from the inside, he has outside leverage here. So it's important that when you're talking about running games, you often see, you know, fans when they look at plays like this and what they see is open space, but they don't understand the context of the position of defenders to know why this play, why the running back made the decisions he did and why they're either good or bad decisions. These are good decisions because you, the, the design of the play is to seal the in, the backside here with the blocks that you see you know, at the line of scrimmage. Then you have your puller come and kick out you know, either the outside man here or the linebacker. He chooses the outside man that gives Williams a one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. You also have the defensive end, you know, winning his block at the hash here. And that forces Williams to have to try and make a move back to the inside. Now, he gets decent yardage on this play. I mean, you see here, he ends up with about four yards on this play. But there's not much more you're going to be looking for here other than what he did. So. All right, so this is the big play for Tyson Williams here. You're going to see one receiver, which basically in this set, you're looking into 13 personnel, three tight ends. One of them's going to wind across here as a lead blocker. 
There he is winding across. It's basically essentially a pole with everyone else slanting to the left side. Nine in the box here for the Las Vegas Raiders. Williams does a good job approaching the line up the hash. Sees the defense, moves the defender really with his approach. Let's look at it one more time here. Watch how he moves the linebacker with his approach towards that outside following that linebacker right there. And he sees the hole open up, and he knows this is going to be a quick hole to open up. So that one step to the outside does enough to move this defender, and he gets into the hole quickly. So it's a nice little cutback following that defender. While it's like a pull because it's a windback, and there's not the blocking's a little bit different here. It's not exactly the same rules of the gap play, and it's a quick hole. He finds it, gets past the linebacker, and now he's got a one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And he does a good job of bending away from that safety. And then you have the cornerback here who tries to chase him down. And you can see that Williams has decent burst. You know, this is, this is more of a burst play than top-end speed play because we're only covering, this is about 35 yards. And really most of the action happens in the first 5, 10, 15 20 yards right here that first 20 yards is more about acceleration you can see the acceleration is strong there it has pretty decent contact bounces we've seen even when somebody tries to ankle bite him there he's able to stay on on his feet let's look at it from the end zone view and the same thing you see the nine in the box you're going to see this crease open pretty quickly and you can see he runs with his eyes pretty well. He heads to that outside, starts to feel that backside opening here. And he makes a quick cut, 42 moves over, and it's it's over. And look at him protecting the ball. Very careful protecting the ball. Ball is high and tight up at his chest. Elbow cinched in tight. Other hand over the, the hand that's carrying the ball. This is someone who's being very cautious about holding on to the ball to begin his career which you've got to like, but might also have been cautious to the point that he was a little conservative as a finisher. But on a play like this, it didn't matter. But overall, from when we're watching Williams from the standpoint of vision, he understands where he needs to go. He navigates these plays pretty well with these two pullers working across a little pin and pull action. He's able to work across towards the hash, see the first puller here and the lead block outside and see that there's edge containment with the leverage that he has to cut it back inside and he's able to do that enough to get a couple yards before the backside pursuit is able to wrap him up and he's still able to get yards after contact and extend so on this play you're still looking at a five yard gain out of Williams even though he's having to deal with contact and change direction in an awkward position at the you know near the line of scrimmage here and press and cut back on a play because of the fact that the containment outside is good enough that it beats these blocks. And when you see Williams on zone plays, there's really no hesitation here. I mean, he hits the hole quick once he sees something like this. You know, he sees that open space and he takes that and there's really, there was no hesitation there. Even though the defender shows leverage as he makes his cutback, he's decisive right here because he sees that penetration. So the fact that he's able to discern penetration during the exchange right here and see that that defender's coming around and he sees the push on 78 immediately, he sees that backside opening, gets through it. But as you can see throughout the game, the Raiders are in the backfield on a regular basis. I mean, there's the line's either getting pushed back or penetration is, is basically in the backfield for these guys to contend with. And that's, been a, that's the bigger problem as opposed to who's going to be the running back. Here's another look at Murray's finishing ability. You're going to see it right here. When he enters the crease right here, and it's a tight crease, his pads are down because he's got that nice body lean, but his head remains up. So his back's angled a little bit better for power. And when he gets through here, he's able to extend his run for another two to three yards after that contact in a way that it wasn't as consistent for Williams. You're gonna... All right, so we're well into the second half here. And this is the first play where Tyson Williams gets any pass pro 
exposure. And you're going to see here that you've got four de Raiders defenders really at center and to the left side of the quarterback, whereas you only have two on the outside here. So with Williams, the way that this protection is going to be, everyone's sliding over to that right side, which leaves basically one on the outside here, the tackle, and you're going to have Williams, who's helping to pick out this edge defender 24, who's the defensive back. So he's got to account for this first, especially with 44 dropping back. And you can see at the beginning of the play that Williams scans the field well. He identifies 44, sees 44 drop, and then turns his attention to 24. This is good. Nothing wrong with this. But what's happening here is that 98's playing a game with 77. A game is with a twist when one basically sets up the inside and the outside man comes around. And as a result of that, with 98 coming around, the the interior blocker here doesn't isn't able to pick this up well because he's still engaged with the inside man. Now Williams, after seeing 24 and 24 is doing a good job of baiting this with the guard here. Williams, maybe if he were more experienced, could be able to work inside here and and help catch this looping defender. But that's not his primary responsibility. He's handling his primary responsibilities. He's just, you know, if he were a great blocker as a running back, he'd come off this maybe a little sooner here and and be able to help out with 96. But he's occupied with what's going on on the outside, and that was his responsibility. So, you know, first opportunity, this is a sack, but this was not a miss on Williams' part. Here's Williams' second opportunity as a blocker, and, and it winds up being a situation where Jackson keep, keeps the ball as a runner. And that's not bad. He takes the inside pad, runs his feet around 92, has no shot of being able to tackle Jackson. He engages well in terms of, you know, it's not an ideal attempt, but against a defensive end and you're a running back, you want to get a pop on the defender. You don't want to just use your hands. So while he overextends a bit, he can leave with that shoulder. He gets an impact and he's able to move his feet quickly enough to stay square and work the defender around the arc. That's all you can ask for. This is a good play by Tyson Williams. I'm, you know, I was impressed with that. Now, when you watch Murray, you're going to see that he does a pretty decent job here of pressing, making the cut, and getting to the outside here. I think Williams would be able to run this play very well, too. He's a good zone runner. But Murray's very aggressive into that crease, does a good job of accelerating through the trash and backing his way through here. I think Williams does this well. He just It's just that Murray would have got, got this opportunity and made the most of it. Now, here's a play where... Williams was probably most liable in pass protection. You're going to see him work to the inside and he doesn't see anything come out and then he sees 94 coming to the outside and tries to get around and he's, you know, drops his head, it overextends, the defender's able to work through that easily and he whiffs on this block. Let's take a look at it from the end zone angle and you'll see a little bit better what's going on here. First of all, you have you know, you're looking at basically five men out the line. 24 starts to drop back late. 94 then works to the outside here late too. So they bring in 39 also from the right side. So all of this going on, all of this late shifting, they know this is an inexperienced offensive line in terms of working together, some new guys, and a new running back. So this is a very smart play to try and confuse these guys because Williams is now looking towards 39 as maybe the blitz pickup he's going to have to work across. So he starts to do that, but he sees that the left tackle's got that. 77's going to be on the guard. So he does a good job of reading that, knowing that he needs to come back around. But he didn't really notice 94 quick enough. And when he tries to do, you know, make that adjustment, it's too late. And he's, you know, he's hit first and knocked and basically run through and you can see because he's preoccupied he's scanning 94 last time next time he sees 94 here's he's over here but then he looks away as 94 sliding away here 24 is moving back and 39 is coming into this quick picture on the right side so he doesn't really 
take in that 94 is outside here. This is a good play by the Raiders more than it is an awful play by the Ravens. And, you know, this is something that Williams will learn from. And I don't think he's going to get dinged greatly with this because of the position that they're in. All these backs are learning protections and and at this point and what the Ravens want to do. So the fact that he goes and looks at 39 is smart. He just didn't come off of this quick enough. And by the time he turns around, 94's got the corner, Nassib. He accelerates through, just goes right through him and sacks Lamar Jackson.